Yeah. You can squeeze my yeah. it's okay. Guys, I'm gonna squeeze you all the way in a little bit. I'm sorry. I get your nephew. Yes. All right, cool. So we're now live. You guys have any questions before we start? No? You're good? Awesome. So don't worry, we do have room. Some people are just catching up and it's okay. If you guys miss a day, just uh, come the next day to catch up. The next session, morning, evening, it's totally fine. But we do have enough room. Tomorrow or next day, you'll be a little bit more comfortable. Okay? So real estate licensing. I like to start every chapter with a question. Luckily, this chapter already comes with a question right at the beginning, which is who must be licensed? It says right here, anyone who takes part in a real estate transaction for another person for a fee, commission, or other valuable consideration must have a real estate license. All right, I have a question. Um, let's see, Melissa. Have to put money right away. If you're trying to sell your mom's home, right? Because you said, hey, Melissa, could you please help me out? And say, yeah, sure, I'm licensed, but yeah, go ahead. Can you sell my house? Great. Do you need a license to actually help your mom sure. sell the house? I guess so. You guess so? It's a yes or a no? Yes. Yes? My answer is depends. All right, you're shaking your head, so why? Uh, depends if you do any like owner by owner, you don't okay. need a license. Okay, so if it's a for sale by owner, you don't need a license, but you're helping the owner. You're not the owner. That's what I was saying. You're helping your your mom sell the house, mm -hmm. right? So do you need a license? Do you? What if uh, what if you work directly with a brokerage company? Very okay. Hold on. Please so. My question is, you're helping your parents sell their house. Okay. Forget brokerage. Okay. The question was, was oh, you're you helping yourself? sell the house. Do you need a license? Okay. You're saying no. Somebody yeah. said yes. What about if the uh, person, the relative, is power of attorney? Okay. You might not might not need it. That yeah, still it still depends. I, I, I don't know. Yes. No, no. Perfect. Okay. We'll, we'll get to all this. Okay. Yes. Absolutely. The key words here is, hey, uh, Melissa, help me sell the house and I'll give you the car that's in the garage. See, the car is something of valuable consideration. You guys got it? If you expect to get paid in the transaction or receive some type of compensation in the transaction, then you must have a license. If there's no compensation, if you're just assisting, somebody sell their home and you're not expecting any type of payment or exchange in any way shape or form right then you do not need a license you guys got it the key words here were uh fee commission or the valid consideration so make sure you guys underline that and you can put stars next to everything that's green. thank you guys you can put stars next to everything that's green right there okay All right, we got people watching from home, so I'll be interacting also with whoever's at home so you guys know. All right? Just think out loud. You're thinking out loud? You were like Siri, huh? <laughs> All right. Now it says right here in New Jersey, licenses have been administered since 1921 by the New Jersey Real Estate Commission operating within the Department of Banking and Insurance. Licenses are governed by the Real Estate License Act, known as Title 45, Chapter 15, and regulations are set up by the Commission, known as Title 11, Chapter 5 of the Administrative Code. Don't worry so much about this. I know it's in green, but we're going to repeat it several times, okay? Right now, what I want you guys to write is, right in front of this, NJAC 11, colon 5. NJAC 11 colon 5 because later on in the book when we address 11 5 because later on in the book when we address 
NJC 11.5, I want you to know that we're talking about New Jersey Administrative Code, Title 11, Chapter 5. Now you can see all these rules, all these regulations in the Appendix B at the end of the book, but you don't have to. Because over the next couple of weeks, guess what we're going to go over? All these rules, all these regulations. If you really want to see how they word stuff and get confused even more, go ahead. All right, you can read the end of the book. If not, then we'll have fun over the next couple of weeks. It'll be a lot easier. So real estate commission, I told you that it was operating within the Department of Banking Insurance, right? What you need to know is that the commission is composed of eight members. There's eight people looking out for you guys and for the general public. Five of these are real estate brokers and have been licensed as such for at least 10 years. Two are chosen from the general public and one represents the department of the state government. Okay? So, eight members in total, five brokers, okay? Five brokers, two chosen from the general public, so it could be you, it could be me, right? And then one represents the government. Can you go back? I charge $5 for that. Mm -hmm. And why do we have two color highlights? Because the point was to put stars where it's green. But okay. Where'd you find it? <laughs> you have another question? You good? Sure. All right. So, next page. I said that. Uh, Five are real estate brokers, two are chosen from the general public, and one represents the Department of the State, right? Something to remember, all members serve three-year terms. Three-year terms, except for the governmental member who serves at the pleasure of the governor. So the governor says, I'm going to use you for the next week, for the next year, or next 10 years. Everybody else, three years, okay? So the brokers and the two from the public. Yes. What is your question? You know the capital of America? What is it? Cool. So just want to let you know you're going to get your license soon. Just putting it out there. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, you can take your test? All right. <laughs> Got it. Let's talk about capital later. Is that okay? Cool. Thank you. So, real estate licenses. You guys came here to get a real estate license, correct? All right. Do you guys know which licenses uh, we have in real estate without reading? Salesperson, which is what you're getting. Broker, what else? Referral, and there's one more. Insurance, not for real estate. Broker, salesperson, for those that are reading from the book, I appreciate it. So, so there's four classes of license. We have the broker, we have the salesperson, the broker, salesperson, and referral license, okay? Anybody came here to get a realtor's license? Realtor's license? Okay, cool. There's no realtor license. Okay? See, the only licenses we have is, again, the broker. That's what we start with. Because you cannot work in real estate without having a sponsoring broker. Okay? The broker is the one that's responsible for the whole agency. We can have different types of people working there. So, salespeople, broker, salespeople, and referral agents. But they all answer to and are under the supervision and guidance of the broker of record, okay? I want you guys to circle, put several stars, arrows, bubbles, whatever you have to put, but you need to remember this one person responsible for the whole agency is called broker of record. Now I'm letting you know right now, I'm gonna repeat this so many times, it's gonna sound like a broken record, okay? Yes, my jokes are corny but they're good. You'll remember them. Okay? 
Next, we have a salesperson license, which is what all of you are getting right now. You're getting ready for the salesperson license. Now, a salesperson works under a sponsoring license broker, so you cannot work by yourself. You need to be sponsored, right? Doing business in the name of that broker and receiving, look what I have in green, the only thing I have in green that you have to remember. Receiving compensation only from that broker. So can your cousin pay you? No. 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 Can the seller pay you? No. Can the buyer pay you? No. Whoever's involved in the transaction pays your broker of record and your broker splits a commission with you. You guys got it? You cannot receive compensation from anyone other than your broker. What is the job of the broker for you? Is to provide guidance and direction. Why? Because they're personally responsible for all your mistakes. You guys make a mistake, you get sued, your broker gets sued. You got it? Next we have broker salesperson. See, broker salesperson, I call these the hybrids. Why? Because they qualify to become brokers, but they chose to still work under another broker. You guys got it? They qualify to be brokers. I'm going to talk about qualifications in a little bit. But they still chose to work under uh, the supervision of the broker. So they work on a salesperson capacity. And finally, referral agent. Now, this license is no longer called referral agent. You still work as a referral. and But instead of being a referral license, you're actually a salesperson working for a referral company. So now the broker is the one responsible to have for having two different branches within the same agency. One is the active agency and the other one is the referral agency. You are still a salesperson, but you either active or referral. You guys got it? And why did I say active or referral? Because as a referral agent, you're not active. The only thing you're allowed to do is refer. Make sure you circle, underline, put stars, arrows, bubbles, whatever you need to put. But remember that the only thing you can do is refer. Good so far? Question. Yes, so when you refer someone. I didn't like, say you could ask. I just, you're okay. Okay. <laughs> when you refer someone, right, usually you don't get the full commission, right? You get a referral fee. So a percentage, let's say I represent the buyer you get a percentage of whatever I get. You got it? From you, not from the broker itself. Well, from the broker. but So my broker gets paid, and you get paid from your broker. Okay. Simple. So the referral fees, all kinds of fees, all types of payments go through the broker. And you get a percentage of that fee. You got it? Mm -hmm. Next, all licenses. Initial, renewed, or reinstated licenses are issued on a biennial term that expires on June 30th of odd numbered years. That means that every two years we have to do what? Renew, Renew your license. Every two years. But we are in 2020. Yeah. Is this even or odd? Even. Even. So do we have to renew this year? Yeah. No. Next year, do you have to renew? Yes. Regardless of when you started, Renewal always happens on odd number of years. Always. You might have some other things that you don't have to do, like continuous education, which we'll talk about in a little bit, because every two years you have to do continuous education. Depending on when you graduate, when you get your license, if you're within a certain period of time, you might not have to do it. If you're a referral agent, you don't have to do it. You got it? But all licenses must renew. Next, the book brings us a couple statistics. It says in 2017, there was approximately 93,000 brokers, broker salespersons, salespersons, and referral agents. Do you guys feel threatened by this number? The number has increased. We're like 100, almost 110,000. No. You don't feel threatened? I won't either, right? But look around, full class. Do you think there's competition? Absolutely not. Because here's the thing. State of New Jersey has over 9 million people. What's 93,000 agents? 
And now you're saying, well, not everybody sells, not everybody buys. Guess what? Not all agents are active either. So we'll go back to the same ratio. There's too many people, not enough agents. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I could have my classes packed for the next 10 years and still not have enough people to serve the, the state of maturity. So no competition. You are your own competition. That's it. Your own and only competition. Nobody else. We're going to learn all this as we go. Uh, next, I asked you guys if you came here to get your realtor's license, and I told you there's no realtor license. The license that we have is salesperson, broker, salesperson, broker, or referral. To be a realtor, to advertise yourself as a realtor, even sounds nice, like, like Superman, right? Realtor, right? You got to be part of an association, a private trade association called National Association of Realtors. Once you're part of it, then you can advertise as being one. Until then, you are a New Jersey salesperson, real estate salesperson. That's it. You guys got it? You want, you want to be a super realtor? No, you're smiling. Yeah? No, it costs a lot of money. What is a lot of money? Anything. Oh, here's the thing. You do a couple of rentals, and it's paid off. That's it. My first deals of the year is to pay fees. From there on, profit. If you put it like that, this is the best business ever, because with less than $1,000 a year, you're in business. Way less than $1,000. Depends on how active you want to be in, which counties you want to be in, what type of accesses you want to have. But less than $1,000 a year, you're in business. And what's the average commission? So just putting it out there in terms of fees, what's the average commission of the state of New Jersey? No, no, we're talking about real numbers. Based on average deals, based on average size, it's the minimal $6,000 on a sale. So one sale right in the beginning of the year, your fees are paid. Right? And you might have to gas money for the rest of the year too. <laughs> you never know. Right? And that's the way you have to think of. Right? How many deals do I need to keep my business afloat? One. Everything else, profit. You got it? Just don't forget taxes. You still have to pay taxes. But we're gonna go over all this stuff. Next, activities covered. It says right here that when the work is being performed for another person and in anticipation of a fee or commission, a broker's license is required to list real estate for sale. On top it says, to sell, exchange, buy, auction, or rent real estate, to collect rents, to solicit prospective purchasers or sellers, to negotiate a real estate loan, to sell lots or other parcels for a developer, to sell business opportunities that involve real estate, or attempt to do any of the above. So all these require a broker's license. But are you guys becoming brokers right now? No. 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 Salespeople. So let's figure out how, let's figure out what salespeople can do. A salesperson license allows the holder, you guys, to operate under the supervision of a licensed broker to assist. You are the broker's assistant, sales assistant, okay? So we assist in negotiating the purchase, sale, or exchange of real estate, negotiating real estate loans, leasing, renting, and collecting rent, and selling lots or other parcels for a developer. This is what we do. I always ask this question in this chapter, which is, is there anything here in these bullet points compared to the broker's bullet points. Anything here that you think it's missing, that you as a salesperson usually does, right? But you don't see it here. Give me something that, comparing both, something that you thought you do, but it's on the broker's side, not your side. Anybody? List, is that what you said? Listing real estate for sale. Who lists the real estate? Who knocks on doors? Let's put it this way. Who knocks on doors and say, hey, seller, would you like to sell? Realtors, realtors right? But realtors not a license, so let's define who does it. Salespersons. <laughs> Make sure you guys separate this. Realtors and salespeople, two different things. A broker is a realtor, 
But for this purpose, salespeople knock on doors. But they're knocking on doors on behalf of the broker. So who lists the real estate? The broker. So even though I knock on that door, that listing belongs to the brokerage. That means if you ever leave the office, that listing stays behind. You solicited, you negotiated, you did everything, but it belongs to the broker who guided you through the process. You guys understand? All right. Now you're gonna learn a lot throughout this, uh, this book that to every rule there's an exemption or an exception. So it says right here, a real estate license, a real estate license is not required, circle not required, for owners handling their own property as unrepresented sellers, referred to as for sale by owner or FISBOs. Have you ever heard of these? For sale by owners? It's the people that think, hmm, I don't need a realtor. Yeah. I can sell it on my own. And you might be able to. Totally fine. Right? You don't need a license if you're selling your own home. Because for you to get a license, we said this. Um, we said this in the in the beginning of the chapter. For you to get a license, I mean to need a license is because you're getting a fee commission or valid consideration. As an owner, are you getting any fee commission or valid consideration? No, you're getting what's called profits, right? Profits and commission or fees are two separate things. So that's why you're exempt. Next, attorneys, executors, trustees, receivers, administrators, legal guardians, and others handling real estate under the order of a court. Keyword is under the order of a court. Please underline that. So if the judge says, you help this person sell their home, what do you do? Help this person sell their home. Do you need a license? No, because judge said so. Judge appointed you to do it. If you feel good about it and the commission was good, right? And you say, hmm, I could do this every day. If you turn it into a regular business, now you need a license. If it's under the order of a court, no license needed. You got it? Cool. I already asked to turn on the AC. I see you there struggling. You're hot too? Okay. I just don't want to open up the windows because it gets noisy. All right, so uh, banks and trust companies are also exempt and then insurance companies. Notice that it says insurance companies are exempt. Does it say insurance broker? No. But here's something that could happen, because my job is to train you also on how to pass the exam, how to look out for certain questions. And one of the questions that I have uh, there is, all these people are exempt from uh, the real estate license except, right? And one of the answers is insurance broker. The problem is how our brain works. The moment you see broker, the first thing you think of is broker of record. Or, because it's a broker, doesn't need a license. But if it says insurance broker, right, then you need a license. You're not a real estate salesperson, not a real estate broker salesperson, you're not a real estate broker, nor are you a referral agent. You guys got it? So our brain points out to broker versus the whole sentence, right? I'm going to train you a lot on this stuff, on what your brain assimilates first versus the whole thing and where the commas are, where the letters are missing, stuff like that. Now, the only thing that matters in the whole book, nothing else matters, right, is getting paid. It's the only thing that matters. After we learn this, you can throw the book out, right? It would be nice if it was like that, right? So, payment for services. To collect a commission, one must be licensed at the time that the service is performed. Why is this so important? Because if you're closing tomorrow, but your license expires today, are you getting paid? No. Nope. 
not at all. So make sure you always, always, always renew your license. You got it? You want to do referrals tomorrow, but you don't have a license. Can you get paid? Renew it. Like I said, one referral, one deal, and it pays for everything. So why not? I have agents that have been licensed for three, four years, that people that I know, that my students, licensed for three, four years. Some of them are very active and making decent money. Some of them haven't done anything in the past four years, three years. You're going to tell me that in three years you never heard one person say, I want to rent, I want to buy, or I want to sell. In the past three years, you never heard one person say that. You see what I'm saying? If you heard him say that, well, hey, hey, I have a real estate license. I don't have the time, but my broker, my teammate, anybody, could you please handle this client that wants to buy, sell, or rent? And then what do you get? A referral fee. If you don't have the time, somebody does. Just don't waste your time here and not do anything with your license. That's all I'm trying to say, okay? Now it says right here, it is illegal for anyone to share in the, any portion of a commission without a real estate license. We already addressed that. Can your cousin pay you? Can you give money to your cousin for referring business? No. You guys got it? Next it says, a broker may share. It's not highlighted, but I, want, I like to address it so you guys understand. A broker may share commissions only with his or her associated salespersons, meaning this is my office right here, all of this group. I can share a commission with you guys. I cannot give money to anyone else other than you guys or your broker. Let's say you guys brought a buyer to one of our listings. If they bring a buyer to one of our listings, they're entitled to a commission, correct? Can I pay them directly? No, I can only split with my people or with your broker. From broker to broker, it's okay. You guys got it? And then your broker splits with you or with a broker who's licensed in another state, okay? So if you refer down to Florida, do you need to have a license in Florida? No. No, you just need to have somebody there with a license. Their broker will pay you the referral fee. Do we need to have a license in 50 states? Nope. I only have a license in New Jersey and I don't intend to have licenses in other states. I'm not traveling there, I don't live there. Unless you have a situation like one of my students that uh, uh, she's been active in real estate for three years, but she lives uh, six months out of the year in Georgia, six months out of the year here. Well, while you're in Georgia, why not do real estate? Does that make sense? But we're right next to New York. Do you think I have a New York license? No, traffic alone makes me say no. Let me refer to somebody and let that somebody pay me. And that commission might be a whole year's worth, even at the referral. You got it? Yes. I'm gonna bother you all night. You're gonna bother me all night? All right, cool. So you don't really need a license to be a referral person. Do you? So how come people keep bothering me? Do you need to do a part-time job? You can refer somebody who needs a, who needs a, to buy a house. To me, mm -hmm. you get a commission. Well, if they're paying you a commission, it's under the table, and that is illegal. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh-huh. You didn't hear that she gets paid no, under no, the yeah. table? Oh, okay, that's what you didn't hear? <laughs> That Melissa is doing stuff illegally. <laughs> By the way, people at home, her last name is. <laughs> I got the whole real estate commission on her, right? right. All right. Don't worry, the camera is just on me, not on you guys. We do have a camera, but that was just security. It's not uh, doing anything live, it's just internal. But this one is only focused on me. You can hear you. So if somebody recognizes your voice, <laughs> sorry. All right. Um, is the air conditioning better now? You want me to lower it a little bit more or is it okay? It's good? Sorry, I'm just making sure and I'm letting my butler know that it's good. 
my partner, I mean, sorry. Go ahead. All right, so I told you that every rule has what? Exception. An exception, right? Look what it says here, one exception. After a new law went into effect in early 2010, allows a selling broker, underlying selling broker, to rebate part of the commission to the buyer in the form of a credit or a check. I need to address one thing here. We can operate as a listing broker, that means we represent the seller, or we can operate as a selling broker, that means we represent the buyer. And it gets confusing when you say selling broker, because you see selling, you think seller, right? See, the listing broker is the one that puts it on Craigslist, let's say. It's advertised. But the one that completes the sale is the one that brings the buyer. You got it? So that's the one that sells. I want you guys to put an arrow towards the empty space, and you're going to write buyer's broker. Selling broker is buyer's broker. You guys got it? Where it says selling broker, you're gonna write buyer's broker. The selling broker always, always, always represents the buyer. Is the one that accomplishes the sale. You guys good so far? Any questions? Nope. All right. So what we're saying here is that the Buyer's broker, the one representing the buyer, can give a credit, a rebate, a credit or a check to the buyer. Now, why would we give money to a buyer? Like, don't they have the money to buy? Why would we take a cut out of our commission and say, hey, buyer, here's some of my money? Why? Say it louder. For their closing, to make sure they close? Like you're not getting out of here without closing, I'm gonna give you my money so you can close. Well, that's the answer. Yeah. Sometimes buyers, mainly because of our fault, okay, sometimes buyers don't know how much money they need. Because we advertise and mortgage brokers advertise as well that all you need is three and a half percent down payment and you're buying a house. Well, what about the closing costs? There's closing costs you have to come up with. Another $8,000, another $10,000, another $20,000, we don't know, right? So the buyer must be aware of these things. Sometimes we get to the closing table and the difference is minimal. We're talking about $1,000, $1,500. Your commission is about to be $15,000. Are you gonna let that deal die because of 1,500? No, of course not. You're gonna call your broker real quick because you cannot make that decision your own. You're going to call the broker real quick and say, hey, broker, can we, you know, just 1500 And some of the brokers will say, absolutely. Some of the brokers will say, absolutely not. And some of them will say, we can reduce 1500 but it's coming out of your side, not my side. It all depends on whatever brokerage you're going to go work. That I can't control. You guys got it? Can we negotiate at the closing table? Yes. Will it come out of your commission? That depends on you and your broker. You got it? Okay. Next, Melissa. Well, you said you're gonna bother me, so guess what I'm doing? Bothering you. And I guess this is for Raquel as well? She gets paid under the table as well? No. That's why she got, okay. <laughs> no, I thought you were calling her. <laughs> oh, I thought you were calling her attention because she got all like, oh, Melissa and I, we can share commission under the table. All right. Look what it says. <laughs> That's it. Look what it says. Could you, could you read loud for me, please? Huh? Miss Brutus, come on, read loud. Finance speaks money or yeah. Money I give to an unlicensed person or for buyers or sellers are also forbidden. So can you get paid under the table? Yes. No. No. You can, but it's not You can, but it's not supposed to. So you're not getting a license and you're not getting a license. Just letting you guys know. Can you get paid under the table? The answer is no. Absolutely not. 
people actually posted on social media. And she media. says, for you to focus? She oh, just said, yeah, absolutely. People can post whatever they want. It's not legal. Guys, unless you're part of the transaction, meaning you're the one, like there's, there's a wholesalers out there. The wholesaling premises is that you put a contract in and you flip the contract. That's the only way to get around the whole licensing thing. Oh. So unless you're part of the contract and have equitable title, meaning you put money in, you <laughs> cannot make money from a third party. Unless you have a license, of course. Got it? People advertise on Facebook. Of course they do. Do people do rentals as well without licenses? Yes. Help others rent? Well, it's illegal because anyone that participates in the real transaction for another person for a fee, commission, or valid consideration must have a license. And that includes rentals. Well, not that you are owner, right? Third parties. If you're helping somebody else. Oh, yes. Okay. okay. You got scared for a second? Yeah. Don't worry. The only criminals is Melissa and... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Unlicensed assistance. Um, question. Should we do all the work ourselves? If you're able, yes. <laughs> if you're able, yes. Greedy people. Greedy people. The answer is no. We should not. We should focus on the stuff that makes us the money, while other people should focus on the stuff that leads us to the money. Meaning, we are salespeople, we are not clerks. If you can get to the point where you can afford to pay somebody to do that 15 to $25 an hour job, do it. And then your job is to get the $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 an hour job, which is sales. You got it? A complete deal takes on average 10 hours. On average, 10 hours. If you make $10,000 in that deal, how much do you make an hour? $1,000 an hour. Now, I wish I had these deals every day, right? But we don't. But if it only takes 10 hours, what are you doing with the other 40? The other 30, I'm sorry. Finding more. Fill in the pipeline. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You guys got it? Mm -hmm. And for you to fill in the pipeline, we get lost. Like, I have no time to do my deals, so most of my deals are referrals. Some of the stuff I do, and we'll put people in place to, to do most of the clerical work. Does that make sense? You get, you'll get to a point where it's too many leads, and you start either rejecting or giving. Never reject leads. Give them out, at least you get something. You got it? Unlicensed assistants. So here it goes. It says, salespersons and brokers often use assistants, secretaries, and similar support staff who are not allowed to perform activities that require a license. I'm sorry? You're an assistant? That's, I mean, uh, yes. I was going to say something. But okay. Uh, so a real estate assistant? Yes. Oh, great. And you said to your boss, I'm taking my license and I'm not working for you anymore? Oh, she's been fine. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> Any other assistants here? I was. You were? For many years. For many years? And what'd you say? Um, why, did, why, why are you not anymore? I went back to college. Congratulations. Almost done. I wanted yeah. to um, look into other things, but I'm coming back. <laughs> you want to look for other things and back to real estate? <laughs> Can't get out. <laughs> real estate life traps you, I know. Hey, we, you were an assistant too? Yes, kind of. Kind of. Are you one of those yeah, under the table assistants? Oh, for your husband. Kind of for your husband. Yeah. <laughs> you too for your husband? No. Oh, just like yeah. <laughs> I have been on like 18 years. Assistant for 18 years. Manager, wow. assistant manager, all that. That's crazy. It's Evolution is great. Yes. Three weeks. Three weeks as an assistant. You. <laughs> You still, or you were three weeks and you're done? Three weeks and I was done. Okay. It was that bad? Yeah. But I wanted to do it myself. Okay. Listen, the problem is most of us don't value the assistants. That's the biggest problem. Assistants are the best thing ever. All right? If you're an assistant for 18 years, something is wrong, right? Well, no, I mean, I went out. I was just not an assistant. Okay. 
Let's look, let's look at this. Let's see what the value is of an assistant. You guys ready? It says right here, in general, prohibited activities are those involving contact with clients or customers, meaning they cannot deal with the customers directly other than to do certain things, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Let's figure out what they cannot do. An assistant cannot show property. Please make sure you guys circle, put arrows, bubbles, whatever you need to put to remember. They cannot show property. Answer any questions about listed property. Make cold calls by phone or in person seeking business from potential listers, purchasers, tenants, or landlords. Discuss or explain a contract with anyone or any other doc, real estate document with anyone outside the brokerage firm. Make telephone calls for rent collection, or if you guys please underline here, except when accompanying a licensee. Underline, except when accompanying a licensee. You cannot host open houses or promotional booths, distribute promotional material, or attend a home inspection. Cannot do these things. So, assistants. Raise your hand again, assistants. You don't even raise because you know what I'm about to ask. How many of you done this stuff? Any of these that we just went over? Well, you did it for three weeks. You just made the cold calls, right? You did cold calling. I know. No, I want you to tell me the truth. I did a few. You did a few? None, so you have. And she's been your. Since January. Since January? I, like, I go get like seals and inspections. Perfect. Like, Doesn't involve the client. No. All right. And um, your husband made you do this stuff or not? No. No? Okay. So here's the thing What is so wrong, guys? What is so wrong with hosting an open house? What is so wrong with attending a home, a home inspection when all you do is sit there and watch people go back and forth? What is so wrong about distributing promotional material? It's literally just, hey, a flyer about the house. What is the problem with these things? Just because you're not licensed? There has to be a better explanation. You're not fingerprinted. You're not fingerprinted? Can't get paid. Can't get paid? Lawsuit? Why lawsuit, Katya? Why? Why or how can you get sued for just standing there? Misrepresentation? Misrepresentation. How do we get to misrepresentation if I'm the only standing there? Like saying anything wrong that you're not sure. Now we're getting somewhere. You could get sued for misrepresentation because you said something wrong. That means somebody asked a question. If your assistant is there by him or herself, they're open to questions. Can they answer those questions? No, because they're not licensed. It's not about the fingerprints, but that was a good one. They're not licensed to answer these questions. And the problem is your assistant traditionally knows more about the real estate than you do. Because your job, as I said, is to be out there looking for more deals. Their job is to be focused on the active deals. So they know all the details, right? So imagine an open house, your agent, your assistant is there. Somebody walks by and goes like, this is a really nice house. Why in the world are they selling? And what does your assistant say? Because what? What you say? It's haunted. It's haunted. Wow. I was gonna go with divorce, but hey, it's haunted. Yeah. Dust the divorce, but <laughs> that's what it is. But the moment they say something that could affect the transaction, that's when you get in trouble. Your assistant, you, and your broker. Okay. But let's figure out what they can do. Why are they so valuable? It says right here, an unlicensed assistant or secretary may answer phones and forward calls, process and submit listings and changes to the MLS, place signs on properties, pick up keys and deliver documents, schedule appointments for showing listed property, set up files and track and secure documents, or only under the direction of the licensee they can have keys made for company listings, write and place ads, type contract forms, order items or inspections, right? You did that, Raquel, right? Mm -hmm. Prepare flyers and promotional material. If you guys look at what I just said, that's about four hours of your 10-hour day. I told you 10 hours for it, so 
think you said eight. Everything is here. They could prepare the contracts for you. They're not dealing with a customer. All I have to say, hey, on property on 18 Oliver Street, they accepted the offer, right, or prepared the offer for uh, 300,000, and they fill everything out. They send, you review it, send to the clients, we're good to go. You didn't have to spend time in the front of the computer, right? You need to put an ad advertising a property. They're not dealing with a customer. All they need to do is prepare the ad, you review, and they place it. Simple. You guys understand? So it cuts out a lot of the work you have and you out there doing what? Getting more deals. Is that why, is that why Boca's only hire part-timers? Uh, it depends on the brokerages. Like our brokerage is mainly focused on part-timers. So it depends on the brokerage. Uh, they, they believe, those that only do full-timers believe part-timers are a waste of time. Simply because if you're not there constantly, right? then what are you learning? What are you doing, right? They believe that a full-time uh, agent is gonna have the majority of their time dedicated to real estate. I don't agree with that, because full-timers are fools. They have eight hours in the day to work or more, but are they actively working? No. In the morning, we got time, because nobody's gonna show houses at 10 o'clock in the morning, right? So we're gonna go for that breakfast. By the time you're done with breakfast, oh, look at that, it's lunchtime. Mm -hmm. By the time you're done with lunchtime, maybe we should go have a coffee before we really start the day. <laughs> Five o'clock comes, got to go pick up the kids or go do something, and the day's over. So they just waste their time. Not all full-timers are like that, but guess what? Not all part-timers are a waste of time either. There are some part-timers that make way more money than full-timers. Got it? So... I don't know who you're going to be or what you're going to do, but like I said, the only competition you have is yourself. What else can they do? They can keep the records up and deposit earnest money, secure deposits and rent. They can follow up on loan applications. Why should you, realtors, have your assistant call the mortgage assistant? Let them communicate. You got it? And the last one, nobody needs help with, so we can just move forward, right? Computing commission checks. You already know how much you're going to get paid. In fact, you already spent the money before you even got it. Isn't that true? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> Not all realtors do this, but the majority of the realtors, they were employees like you. So in their mind, is they're getting a check for sure at the end of the week, so they can spend the money now. The problem with real estate is... It's not closed until it closes. So until we exchange keys for the check, we didn't close. You cannot plan on that money until you really have it. Next, uh, license qualifications. To so become a salesperson, and if you guys don't meet any of these qualifications, I'll give you enough time to leave, okay? So to obtain a salesperson license, the candidate must be 18 years of age or older. Almost, right? Gotcha. You're definitely 18, right? You are. Cool. Anybody else? Almost 18? All of us, right? Next, you got to prove a high school education or its equivalent. Furnish evidence of good moral character, and that's why these two people here, the first and second row, will not get their license because good moral character went out the door. Huh? No, I said them too. These two rows on that side. It's sad, isn't it? But we can talk about them later. Good moral character. You know the first step is here, right? I can literally block you from moving forward. Just saying. So be nice to me, okay? Oh, that was rule number 13. I forgot to say be nice to your instructor, and maybe you'll pass. Simple. Next, successfully complete 75-hour pre-licensing course. That's what you guys are doing here. You have to complete the 75 hours, and that includes uh, passing the school exam, getting a certificate, then going to um, the state exam. You need to disclose your social security number for child support enforcement purposes, 
I have a simple rule. If you made them, pay for them. It's a lot easier. No headaches. Provide documentation of citizenship in the United States or legal residence in the United States. Pass the state examination. And the most important part, be sponsored. I said that earlier. Be sponsored by a licensed real estate broker. And you need to be sponsored by them to do what? Make sure you guys highlight that and put a bunch of stars. The same way I told you I have people that became licensed, students became licensed and did nothing with their license. There's people that have completed the course and then the year goes by real quick. They never activated. Passing the exam gives you a little paper that says, congratulations, you passed. It's called a score report. That means you're able to endure 75 hours in really bad jokes. And you got there. You still passed. You still made it. But it means absolutely nothing if you don't activate it. It will not make you money if you don't activate it. You don't know the amount of people that last minute, hey, Bruno, I have two months to activate, or I have two weeks to activate. It's crazy. A year goes by. As soon as you pass the exam, place your license somewhere. If you're not sure yet, just anywhere. Figure it out later. You guys got it? At least it's active. Because if you don't, guess what you have to do again? Everything again. And I promise you guys, it's the same bad jokes. Every time. Okay? Right? Now, I got a question for you, Bruno. Absolutely. If I get a license and I want to get it activated, and I go to a broker, mm -hmm. okay, and I'm not going to do nothing with it, would they charge me for keeping it Some will. active? Some will. On a DL, maybe? No, what, what they'll do is put you on the referral, for instance. Okay. That's it. So they will, but they would charge me something for keeping it active. It's like $100, $100 a year on average. Okay. But that's what, as a referral. If you want to be an active salesperson, even though you're not doing anything yet, right. then the problem is, does your broker participate in the National Association of Realtors? Because if they do, mm -hmm. then you have to pay for those fees as well and be part of it. Or they get penalized. That's like the okay, so if they're part of it, then you have to be part of it as well. Correct. Absolutely. Otherwise, they get uh, penalized for you not, not being part of the roster. Gotcha. They see you're licensed under the state, and they're like, hey, what's going on? And then MLS could uh, charge you penalties, uh, the broker penalties, and the association. Both policing? Both policing system, yeah. Okay. So for you to have access to all that stuff, you need to be an active agent. For you to be an active agent, depending on the brokerage, and the majority of brokerages are now part of the National Association of Realtors then you have to be as well. But again, it's like 500 bucks a year. A year, for a whole year. Okay? okay? Thank you. Uh, you can choose whether or not to have the MLS, but to be a realtor, you need to pay that. It's like a union do, like a gym membership. It's an association that comes with a lot of benefits. Okay? Thank you. All right, to become a broker. Anybody intends to become a broker eventually? Cool, because you see all the money they make, right? That's the only reason. To become a broker, you have to be 18 years of age or older, provide the uh, equivalent of a high school education. So exactly the same thing as a salesperson. The biggest difference is right here. For you to become a broker, you must have served at least three years full time as a licensed salesperson. Also, you must have completed 150 hours of study consisting of a 90 hour general broker pre licensing course 30-hour pre-licensing course on brokers' ethics and agency law and relationship, and a 30-hour pre-licensing course on office management and related topics. So question, how many hours do you need to become a broker? 225. 225. Yeah. See, the thing about the state exam, is that they ask broad questions as well. I asked you how many hours you need to become a broker. Well, the 75 you're doing right now and three years later, 150. If the state exam said 
John, a salesperson, wants to become a broker, how many hours does he need? If he's a salesperson already, then how many hours does he need? One, no, now it's 150. He's already a salesperson. You got it? They just need the difference. Which thing is Not the set of things. Okay. So that would be 225 hours? That's the total. From now till three years later, it's a total you have to complete to become a broker. Okay? So 75 now, and then 150 three years from now. You got it? But the state doesn't really come up with that question, though. The state? Sometimes. It's in yellow. <laughs> Sometimes it does. Everything else is the same. All right, to become a referral agent. Anybody came here to become a referral agent? Anybody? No, okay, great. Because here's the thing. To become a referral agent, you must fulfill all the requirements of a salesperson or broker's license including examination. So to be able to refer and get paid for it, same exact requirements. Also, you must submit a certificate stating the legal activities of a brokerage, act, I'm sorry, the legal restrictions on the brokerage activity of a referral agent have been reviewed with a supervising broker. That means you sat down with your broker, you said you want to do referrals, and your broker said, okay, if you want to do referrals, you cannot show houses, you cannot prepare contracts. You cannot even talk about real estate other than, hey, John, do you want a buyer to work with or a seller to work with? That's it. The only thing you're allowed to do is refer. Okay. Can you change status? Yes, 50 bucks. Not bad. You got a question? You want to refer a business to your mom? Is that it? You want to get coffee? I don't think it's wise, but that's up to your mom, not me. How high will he crawl up the walls right after? <laughs> All right. What did I say about rules? They all have exceptions. They all have exceptions. So the first exception here in this rule about licensing is this. Experience requirement. Right above experience requirement, I want you guys to write three year full time. Three years full time. Because that's the experience requirement they're looking for. For you to become a broker, you need to have three years full time, right? And look what it says. The experience requirement, or these three years full time, for a broker or broker salesperson license can be waived for an honorably discharged war veteran with a service connected wound or disability. What you need to focus on is this. It says, can be. Is it guaranteed? No. No. So every time you, say, you see can be or may be, that means there's a possibility, not a guarantee. You got it? Not all veterans will qualify for it. But what we're saying is, if you're a veteran now, you can bypass the whole three years and go straight to broker. You do this today, tomorrow you do 150 hours, and boom, do you become a broker with no experience whatsoever, but you can help the people. Great, right? Is that how your husband got it? No, no, because no, you're doing like this. You're a veteran? Do you have any experience in real estate? Yeah. As an assistant or as a, oh, you're a, yeah, I know how you did it, okay. <laughs> I'm just messing with you guys. But here's my point when it comes to this. If your broker has no experience, how can they be your broker? I There's a lot of things that I think veterans should get. This is not one of them. Because if you have no experience in real estate, how are you serving the people? How are you training other salespeople? You guys got it? Mm -hmm. I'm all about veterans. Actually, in a later chapter, which I did this morning, we'll talk about how we can help veterans, stuff that they don't know that they're entitled to, and we as salespeople can help them. Okay? Yes? You just 
raised uh, a good question because what happens is if the salesperson mm -hmm. brings back a buyer to the broker and he does something wrong, the salesperson also can sue. Everybody can what, sue. Exactly. So it's just like what you said. If the broker don't know what they're doing, mm -hmm. they can jam you up. Absolutely. And here's and here's not only that. There's people that I'm not, not only talking about uh, veterans. There's people that have been doing this for three years. They have no experience whatsoever, and their brokers still sign off for them to get their broker license, which is a big mistake. If you have no experience in real estate, just because you have three years, doesn't mean you can lead. So there's a lot of flaws in the in the in the law. There's the stuff that it's. Black and white, and there's the stuff where, okay, ethically, should this really happen? You guys understand? Yeah. Okay. There's another waiver, by the way, which is the education. Now, I told you guys you have to do 75 hours here, right? 75 hours. Here it says the commission may agree to waive the education requirements. So you might not have to do 75 hours. Who's happy about that one? You're happy? Oh, I was about to say. You're here for the long run, I know. So, it says right here, they may wait for who? Licensed broker from another state. Might not have to do the whole 75 hours. Someone previously licensed as a New Jersey broker within the past five years. Someone who has taken equivalent real estate courses in college. New Jersey attorneys, or in some cases, certain applicants who took an equivalent pre-licensing course in another state. So if you meet any of these, you might be able to reach out to the Real Estate Commission and say, hey, Real Estate Commission, do I have to do the whole 75? Okay? And they'll give you an answer, yes or no. Maybe you don't have to do anything at all. My recommendation, instead of going straight to the exam, is still take the class, regardless. You got it? Because your state, if you're in a different state or if you went to college and you learned about real estate, they might not have anything to do to what we actually do in real estate. That's why this course is way more valuable for this purpose than any other course. Whether it's my class or a different class, it doesn't matter. I'm just saying, even if you have experience in another state, real estate is real estate. But each state has their own specifications. Not only that, after having two or three years of experience in real estate, and you guys will notice this three years from now, when you come back to class to get your broker's license, guess what you're gonna learn all over again? The basics. And that's the biggest challenge that you guys are gonna have. Three years from now, learning how not to have deals under the table again. I'm sorry? You have a good coffee? I need the right rules of the coffee. Good. The rules of the coffee. We'll learn one day. But now we're going to talk about criminals, okay? Cool. So criminals. <laughs> it says right here, no license will be issued to anyone convicted within the preceding five years of forgery, burglary, robbery, any theft other than shoplifting, because we all know shoplifting is okay, criminal conspiracy to the fraud, or any like offense. I always get you anyway. It's simple. To me, I see this as a great thing. If you've been convicted more than five years and one day ago, this is like a second chance program. That's how I see it. When you get out of jail, one of the things that happens is people don't give you a job. People look at your background and say, hmm, you've been to jail. Like, they don't want to know the reasons. Background check says criminal, then you are a criminal. Simple as that. Doesn't matter circumstances. Here, you can come back. Five years in one day. After five years in one day, we can now prepare contracts again. Forgery is no longer a problem. We can get into people's homes because burglary, that was five years ago, right? Wipe them clean, robbery, no problem. All right. And finally, if it's a business, it was always okay. Right? 
a crime other than shoplifting, it was always okay. Wipe them clean, no problem. Again, I'm saying this as a joke, but um, a lot of situations that happen, guys, and I've helped people, and I like to talk about this, I've helped people get their license, writing a letter to the state, a recommendation letter. Why? Because I was young, dumb, and stupid. Everybody deserves a second chance. Everybody deserves a second chance. I made mistakes when I was younger. That's what it is. I made mistakes when I was younger. Right? So what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of people out there that don't get jobs. Guess what? They might be able to become salespeople. I'm not saying that everybody should because there's also dangerous people. But the ones that don't have criminal records could also be dangerous. Right? We have a great example in first row and second row on this side. <laughs> they announced themselves already. <laughs> That you're going to throw. <laughs> yes? I have a question. So it says that um, New Jersey doesn't recognize. Uh, oh, I didn't get there yet. Uh, but yes, you're right. New Jersey does not recognize licenses issued in another state. There's no reciprocity. Mm -hmm. We don't like them, they don't like us. What's so, up? what about, so I, I, I plan on um, moving to Pennsylvania in the next year or so. So, how, would I need to contact, contact their commission to see if they would accept uh, New Jersey license, or would I have to take all their social so you have to contact the real estate commission most states do not allow reciprocity at all some states say okay if you've done pre-licensing right now just like we just said for people coming from another state if you've done pre-licensing right it says right here we might not have to not require from you all the hours but i'll tell you what the advantage is for pa you can do it online you want to do it now do it as your homework do it at the same time if you intend to get licensed in a different state do it at the same time as this. Because the only difference is going to be like 20, 20 to 30%. Of it. The majority, real estate is real estate. Question. So. Question. Can you, is it a, a U.S. together more? I didn't even throw in that question, but I like it. Question. Question. <laughs> are you able to get a, uh, uh, like, multiple state license? You mm -hmm. are. You want to get a license in all 50 states? Go ahead. Do I agree with that? No. One state is enough. Actually, it should be per town instead of per state. I only deal with one town, which, which is Newark. That's it. But if you get an referral from many other states, so... You so get you it paid by your broker. Do you need a license? No. So let's say I, stay, I live in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say you live in Florida, and I live here, let's say, in Vegas, right? This is Vegas. This, yeah, sure. <laughs> Then, uh, then I find then you're the broker or anything whatsoever, right? Then I want I know someone wants to sell a house, then I want to refer that person to you, and you don't it. have you don't have no license in New Jersey, right? Uh, Vegas. In Vegas. So, and that's in that case, it will require to have a multiple state license, right? If I'm the broker in New Jersey and you're a salesperson in Vegas, you can always refer. I pay your broker, and you get paid from your broker. That's it. All right, so somebody's going to PA, got somebody going to Nevada. Anybody else moving out of state? Just want to make sure, so I give you all the heads up. Where are you moving to? Maybe Florida. Maybe Florida. Cool. So all these states that you've mentioned, they have online courses. So take advantage. There's only nine states that require in class, New Jersey being one of them. What didn't you understand? Her question. She's in Vegas. She wants to refer a client, right? Do I need to? Have, do we need to have license in both states? No, because it's broker to broker. Okay, but she. In your question, you have a broker or no? Well, if you're. If well, I didn't really mention that, but Scott. If you're, as long as you have a license there in that state, you don't need to have a license here. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, okay. You can have a license in that state and refer here. Because the broker can be anybody. So broker to broker. broker. So the broker can have multiple license and multiple um, state license. Unless one. she wants to do what you just said before. Okay. She's half and half, half. Six months there, six months here. Do you want to be affiliated with one broker only? Then that broker must have a license in Vegas in Nevada as well. Okay, if you want to be associated with a Remax, right, uh, Vegas, and then um, you're referring business to Century Twenty One of New Jersey, not a problem because it's broker to broker. 
as long as you're associated with them there, right? Okay. And you refer to somebody here, no problem. Okay. I do referrals all the time. And my agency only exists in New Jersey. So obviously I'm referring to other agencies, right? And you should have always healthy competition, not think, oh, they're Century 21, I'm not referring. They're Weikert, I'm not referring. No, healthy competition, refer. You're gonna get paid anyway and they do all the work? Why not? Okay, simple. <laughs> all right, required experience. Required experience, it says right here. So this is the three years. A candidate for a broker's license must have been continuously employed on a full-time basis as a real estate salesperson during the three years immediately preceding the application. So if you've been licensed for 20 years, but the past 10 years have been part-time, do you qualify to get your broker's license? No. The past three years must have been full-time. Full Got it. Now, what is full-time? It says right here. Full-time means that the applicant worked at least 40 hours between the hours of approximately 10 a.m. and 8 p.m., right? And during that time was not employed elsewhere except, please highlight, underline, put stars, except on a part-time basis for no more than 25 hours a week. Do you qualify to become a broker in three years from now? That depends on the job you have. If you work more than 25 hours a week somewhere else, the answer is no. You'll not be able to become a broker right away. Okay? So that's the key, 25 hours a week. New Jersey does recognize they need to pay bills. So they allow you to have a part-time job, not a problem. Full-time job somewhere, what kind of experience are you gonna have? You guys got it? The licensee must be able to show evidence that he or she had experience in listing, selling, and leasing property during the three-year period. So I got two questions for you. Full-time, who's gonna track the full-time? There's no fingerprinting, there's no time card, there's no app that says, hey, start working now and work now, right? There's no app for that. Who's gonna report your experience? The broker. The broker, who's gonna report the hours? Your broker. So the same way you have to be nice to me here in order to move forward, you also have to be nice to your broker. <laughs> I don't know. I never know if this is real because I do get on people's nerves. The same. <laughs> One person, yes. And she's not. She's now a salesperson with us. <laughs> yeah. Gift card. I'm sorry. Gift card. What do you mean gift card? <laughs> yeah, don't throw stuff. Be nice. <laughs> All right, next. Time limit on the application. I already told you about this. You have one year from pre-licensing. What is pre-licensing course? This right here. You have one year from completing my course. One year from the day you got the certificate to activate your license. It's not one year from when you pass the state exam, it's one year from my certificate. You guys got it? So if you pass mine and you say, the biggest mistake you guys make always is, well, I passed yours, now I have to study for the state. If you pass mine, go straight to the state. Mine's the toughest one. Is it? Oh yeah. You get to the state, you better pass the first time. So I prefer you guys fail here as many times as you, as you have to, but when you go to the state, you pass the first time. You guys got it? Yes, and then you have one year to activate from mine, not from state. So if it takes three months to go to the state, you got nine months left. If it takes you six months to go to the state, you got six months left. I've had people go when it's two weeks to end. What'd you say? So how many times I think we can try this state? I mean, forty-five dollars you got. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they actually, they actually have like a special test too. I know somebody that took the test like more than ten times. At the end, they gave like a special test. Wow, oh. really? 
a special test? You know, how special would it be? That was like a few years ago. Okay. But nothing to see right now. No, no. Did the person have a difficulty with language? No, not at all. Okay, no, because they do have, um, nope. you know, not at all. accessibility to. to but push. she she did it the first. She felt the first time the special test and the second time she felt she passed it. So we're gonna call this special test. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What I was gonna say is. Oh boy. Um. Uh, so your test is like a combination of main, uh, multiple, many other tests, like the state from the state test. Kind what of. makes it harder? That's what I'm trying to say. The way I word it. Okay. The way I prepare it. What I include in it. That's good. Thank you guys for that. Thank you. I do, but then people complain when they throw stuff at me. <laughs> yeah, but you both, your state is the same. No, think about, think about it this way. Like, what you guys paid for includes two exams. Right? So if you fail here the first time, come back for a second time. But I prefer that you fail while it's free. Yeah. Then you go out there and pay 45 bucks every time. If you want to throw money away, I accept your money. Just give it to me. That's it. Don't give it to the state. Give it to me. Understood. Got it? So fail mine in order to pass, and then pass the state, get licensed, make money. Simple. Okay, okay, okay. Not residents. You're not going to like it at the end, though. She's like, good, good, good. Don't like that. Yeah. And then at the end, she takes the exam, and we're like, oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Non-residents, can somebody in California have a New Jersey license? Yes. No. Yes, no? Yeah. Maybe. Depends. Mm -hmm. They can, as long as they come to class. They qualify in the usual way. Mm -hmm. Pass the school exam, get a certificate, pass the state exam. But there's one more requirement for somebody in California to have a Jersey license. Consent to be sued here. We're not going to sue you in California, right, or Nevada, or Florida, or Pennsylvania. We're going to sue you here in Jersey. You and your broker. Everybody gets sued here. You guys got it? So can somebody from a different state be licensed in New Jersey? The answer is yes. When we talk about reciprocity, it's because some states, like New York, has reciprocity with PA. So if you got your license in New York, you would go to PA and say, hey, I want to activate my license. Boom. Pay the fee, you're done. Jersey says no. You can have a Jersey license as long as you come to class and consent to be sued. You guys got it? Corporations. Can a corporation be licensed? The answer is yes. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a Remax, a Century 21, a Weikert, us. We wouldn't exist if we weren't able to get licensed. What qualifies us to be licensed is that at least one of our officers must hold a broker's license. So one of us. My partner is the broker of record. Because only one person could be the broker of record. You guys got it? Questions? Good. Yes. Um, can I get some more details on the consent to sue? Is there a form that you have to fill out? Uh, so yeah, there's a non-resident license mm -hmm. application. So when you apply for that license, you just it's, it's a checkbox that you have to uh, oh, okay. fill out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It says I do consent to be sued in the state. That's it. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge. Okay. Yes. Does New York have an online? Uh, they sure do. The exam is still done there, but the the whole course is online. Mm -hmm. You want to get in New York as well? If it's online. Okay. Okay. Take them all. <laughs> Do them all. <laughs> I don't. I personally don't see the purpose of it, but go ahead. I mean, to each his own. With the difference is that you have to split. You have to split the um, like the fine fee, uh, whatever. Uh, what do you mean? The total. Like let's say, for instance, you refer a property, then you have to split. Um, with your broker, yeah, that's it. And with their broker, that's all. It's either you do the but job, you drive there and show houses exactly. every time, go through that horrible traffic, pay the tolls, all that stuff. Not discouraging you. <laughs> or just you or let somebody else do it that already deals with that, and you just relax and wait for that check. Because it's the same. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we call something like farming. 
like you need to know the area you want to work specifically so it don't be all over the place and don't get any deals that really can happen. Absolutely. That's why my focus is Newark. You ask me to, to show a property outside of Newark, I'm going to find somebody outside of Newark. I try not to get out of Newark. I don't live in Newark, but I don't get out of Newark. So. You guys got it? But you want to have it? Absolutely. At one point, that's, what, that's how I thought as well. Let me get a license in every state. I'm getting a license in every state as an instructor because I can teach online to 41 states. That makes sense. I don't have to travel. And I'm already recording this class anyway. It's already live anyway. Does that make sense? Exactly. But to each his own. <laughs> um, I, just, I just gave you, yeah, the secret sauce. There you go. <laughs> we'll talk about it. Um, examination, uh, we're going to talk about the fees in a little bit. There are special arrangements, as we just talked about earlier, special arrangements for people who are blind, disabled, or have extreme language difficulty. That's why I asked if there was any kind of difficulty there. No, I don't. Special exam, that's nice. Is that the please don't come here again exam? <laughs> is that what it is? No, I'm asking because I never heard of a special exam. I heard where you've done it three times and they say, don't come back until 30 days later. No. <laughs> they no, they, that they do that, but they no, do that. I've never heard of that yeah. either. Several times I've heard that. Because uh, you're just wasting your money if you keep on going there. So they tell you, go come back in 30 days. So study. Okay. Temporary license. Right above temporary license, I want you guys to write right here. You're going to write brokers. Brokers, because it's a temporary broker's license. Why would you get a temporary broker's license? In case the broker dies. I am so drastic. In case I kill the broker, she's, I mean, the broker dies, right? It says if the broker dies or becomes mentally or physically incapacitated, then someone in the office must step up. If there's no other broker salesperson, for instance, that could step up, then you, a person with at least three years of experience, full-time, without a, a, a job, a full-time job elsewhere, you can step up and become the temporary broker, the interim broker. You guys got it? Because if there's no broker in your agency, what happens to your licenses? They're all inactive, suspended. And if there's no broker in your agency, who pays you for your deals that are pending? Jesus. Mm -hmm. I don't think Jesus will pay for it. <laughs> you can ask for it. <laughs> but I don't think he will. <laughs> Just saying. The point is, if something happens to your broker, okay, if you have three years full-time experience, what can you do? Step up and become the temporary broker for the whole office. Help everybody out. You got it? There's one thing though. If you want to become the permanent broker, you must complete the requirements for a broker's license within one year. Oh, so that, that temp is a one year? It's temp for one year. For one year. Yep. We're just filling in the shoes, that's it. And there's a lot of people don't want it, but they want the deals that are pending. Right? Mm -hmm. So they take over just for that purpose and then back out and let somebody else take over. You guys got it? There has to be at least one broker of record. All right, so we got another person watching from home. Elle, how are you doing? She's asking, how was the final test? You weren't there, so can't answer. It was great. I mean, for me, it was good, the final test. She was from the previous class. That's why she's asking. Mm -hmm. A great example of life happened. She got sick and decided, hey, since I'm sick, I missed a couple of days. Let me come for the next uh, session. So eventually, she'll be back. So the people who are watching, um, those hours doesn't count? 
Yep. If you miss one day and you watch that one day, I'll still honor it because what you guys uh, signed says you got to complete at least 90% uh, percent of the course. So if you miss a day, you can watch from home. If it's more than one day, then we have a problem. You're going to have to catch up, meaning go either to the morning class or in the next session. Okay, But you do have to catch up. And that's uh, state rules. It's not mine. I would say just watch from home so you guys don't have to travel here. Right? But state requires to be. I have a question. Yes. Uh, when the broker died, uh, the Another one? Jeez. Mm -hmm. You guys planning something? Doesn't have um, three years of experience. Can the office just hire another broker? Well, the office can do whatever. Okay. Like, for instance, I'm partners with the broker. Let's say I'm not, ex uh, don't have the experience yet, or I'm not even licensed. I just put up the money, and he's the broker. If something happens to him, I'm going to have to hire somebody else. So I'm going to have to appoint a broker of record. In fact, when we opened up the business, this business, the real estate uh, agency, we did hire somebody to be our broker while we were waiting for him to get his broker's license. Nothing wrong. I have known people that, that owned brokerages for like 10 years without ever having a salesperson license. You cannot tell the agents what to do, but you can reap the profits, the benefits of having a brokerage. You guys got it? Don't walk out because there's no refunds. <laughs> I see his face like, hmm. That's my plan tell. anyway. What's your plan? To walk out? No, no, no. I thought that um, getting space. <clears throat> so I'm focusing on trying to flip houses and things like that. Gotcha. But I'm just doing it more for like knowledge. This part right there. Right. Whatever works. Okay. I have a lot of people, that's what they do. They come to class just for the knowledge. Mm -hmm never intend to be licensed. Some people come with the intention to be licensed and then never become because they found the passion of investments. Like whatever works. I personally don't care. I'll give you all the instructions, I'll give you all the support, whatever you guys need. Whatever you decide, I'm getting hit again. <laughs> this is day one, really? You're doing this to me? Day one? I feel like I need to test my people over here. C credits, continuous education requirements. <laughs> wow. All broker, broker salesperson and salesperson licenses must complete 12 hours of approved continuous education courses before each two year license renewal. Meaning, guys, every two years we have to do what? Renew, renew our license. And every two years prior to renewal, before we get the okay, we must complete continuous education. Oh. This has been in effect since 2011. So every two years since 2011, continuous education courses. These courses include at least two hours on. Why? Because some people are too aggressive and then they forget what's right and what's wrong. Okay? You cannot chastise people, okay? You're gonna learn this. <laughs> no, but you know what it is, guys. It's what I told you before. You're going to have three years of experience to become brokers. Once you're out there, and, and the best example I can give you actually is who's been to school before? Everybody, right? Hopefully. Right? What school? This one or elementary school? Elementary, middle school, <laughs> kindergarten, maybe? You're still in school? Cool. So here's. Okay. I just want to give you good news. About 80% of what you guys learn, you never use. That is true. That is true. Guess what's going to happen in this book? You're going to use everything, yes. Bye bye. No. That's the problem. You're not. Because we're going to talk about mortgages. We're going to talk about appraisals. We don't do mortgages. We don't do appraisals. We're going to talk about property management. 99% of you will not be property managers. So there's a lot of stuff we're going to cover here. That's even the title company or the attorney that handles what you need to know. So one thing is state exam. Another thing is real life. Real life. Yeah. And I'm teaching the brokers class on the weekends. And it's way tougher than teaching you guys. I bet. Because it's like slapping them in the hand. Like, don't do that. Don't say that. Please stop. Happens. Happens. Bad habits. Right? Like getting money under the table or trying to kill brokers. 
Don't do this. <laughs> Don't do this stuff. I'm telling you. All right. So two hours on ethics every two years, and this should be completed on or before April thirtieth of the renewal year. Yes. I have a question, but I'm not clear about the year. So I noticed you said that. You're not clear about that. The, the year that you have to renew. 2019, 2021, 23, 25, 27. Every odd number year, you have to renew regardless. So even if, so if I get it this year, I still have to renew next year? The renewal, yes. What you might get away with is not having to do this. If you get your license activated within a year of renewal. So because you renew, renew by June 30th, if you get your license by July 1st, do you have to do C credits? No. If you get a license tomorrow, do you have to do C credits? Yes. You got it? Yes? But you have to complete all the credits before April 30th. When do the license renew? June 30th. They expire June 30th, they renew by July 1st. Okay? But they're saying here, complete the C credits before April 30th. If you complete your CE credits from May 1st to June 30th, then you're subjected to a $200 fee. And that's, here it says, you may be. I'm telling you, you will be. It's automated. By May 1st, if your CE credits are not uploaded to the state, boom, your broker is being charged with $200. You guys got it? Now here's something else I have to say about CE credits. You guys ready? As of July 1st, you can start doing courses that count towards your CE credits. Do you have to wait until April 30th? No. no. You can do it as you go. As long as the courses uh, uh, contribute towards the CE credits, you're good to go. You have a year and a half to two years to complete. Don't wait for last minute. You guys got it? The problem is most people belong to the biggest nation in the world. You guys know what it is? The largest nation in the world. Procrastination. Say louder. Procrastination. Amen. Procrastination. And we leave it to the end. We let it go. Just like studying for this class. We let it go. And then it comes to the end, here's the exam. And you're like, ooh, I should have studied. Giving you a heads up. You don't study as we go. The result is going to be great. Just saying. Failure to renew. Let's say you don't renew for two or more consecutive years. What happens to your license? Send it back to the state. Yeah, completely void. That means if you want to reinstate your license, what do you have to do? Take the class again. Come back to class. And you already know about the drills, right? Exactly the same. By the way, we all go to the same school, so it doesn't matter which school you go to, the jokes are the same. Just making it harder for you. <laughs> Past now or forever? Anyway, license fees. The cost for initial license, including application, criminal history, record check, and real estate guarantee fund fees, where applicable, are as follows. As soon as you pass the state exam, you need to come up with $160 to activate your license as a salesperson. Guess how much it is as a referral agent? So to be a referral agent, same 75 hours, same exam, same certificate, state exam, and same money. Might as well become a salesperson. You want to become a broker? 270. And renewal fees are also different for salespersons or for brokers. So $100 for salesperson or referrals and $200 for brokers. You guys good? Yep. Next page, so page five, right on top, it says a broker who goes out of business, a broker who goes out of business, must close out the escrow account, remove the signs, notify clients, and provide the commission with the name, 
an address where past records will be available for circle or underline six years because we're going to repeat this a couple times throughout the book. Six years. Next, you guys don't have to highlight this, but licensing procedure, I already told you, you have to do 75 hours, get a, a certificate from, from the school, pass the state exam, get a score report, and you submit that score report signed by your sponsoring broker, along with a check for $160 to the state treasurer of New Jersey. What you guys don't know yet is what I have in green. You have to do a fingerprinting um, process and consent to a criminal history record check. Mm -hmm. That's where the five years comes in. That's where the five years in one day. Okay. By the way, from conviction. Oh, from conviction. Uh, after you came out. No, no, from conviction. Right. Not when you got arrested and not after you came out is from conviction. Five years in one day. You guys got it? The procedure is handled by Morpho Trust. Again, you guys don't have to highlight. Uh, you can go to the Facebook group when I add you there. There's an option to search. You put fingerprint and it takes you straight to the form you need to print out, which is here. The form you need to print out and the website where you book your fingerprint. Okay? You don't have to ask me or remember this in the book. You just go to the Facebook group, type in fingerprinting, and it's right there. Good? Next. It says right here, salesperson or referral agent license examination. Who handles the examination? The state examination is not us, and it's not the state either. It's a company called ESI Services. Okay. Now, once you pass the school exam, I'm going to enter you into the system. And once I enter you into the system, PSI exam system, you're going to receive an email that says, congratulations, you're now eligible to take the New Jersey real estate license, uh, salesperson license exam, right? You click on that email and it takes you to a registration page. In that registration page, you're going to be able to schedule your exam. What I recommend is that you pick up the phone. Don't do it online. Pick up the phone. Why? Because if you do it online, you're going to have to wait at least four days. If you do it today, and the exam is four days late or more. If you pick up the phone and say, hey, I want to take the exam, where can I do it tomorrow? And they'll tell you, go to Brick, go to Sea Caucus, go to Parsippany, go to any of these locations. They'll tell you what's the one with the earliest or soonest date. You got it? Yes? Why do I tell you to do the next day? Raquel, you just said something. Because you fresh with information. Because everything is fresh. You passed my exam, go straight to the state. Don't wait. Okay? You got it? Okay. We got another student chiming in. Hi, Lucy. No, no, not back there from the camera. Sorry. I'm saying hi at home. I like to talk to ghosts. That's why I say hi to <laughs> I'm not calling you a ghost, Lucy, by the way. She's white as me, so I just want to put a disclosure. All right. Or pale. I mean, transparent. Whatever works. All right. So my favorite location is New Providence. My next favorite location is the shops in North Brunswick. I always recommend that you avoid locations with heavy traffic, like Secaucus, for instance. Unless you live next to Secaucus or work next to it, try to avoid. You got it? Yes? Great. What to bring for your exam? Two forms of ID. One of them? is a government-issued photo ID. 
The other one could be a debit card, credit card, whatever you want. The photo ID, your driver's license, they keep it. The credit card or debit card, they give it right back to you. So they don't go on a shopping spree for four hours. Don't worry. They'll give it right back to you. The exam itself, you're given up to 40, four hours. Sorry, 40 hours. You're given up to four hours to complete, and they ask you that you arrive at least 30 minutes before. Why? Because the same thing that happened here today is registration, right? So there's other people ahead of you. And if you get you schedule for 9 o'clock and you get there at 9, it's up to the proctor to say, go back home or allow you to continue. You guys got it? If you're on time, you're late. Simple as that. Any questions on that? You're good. The examination includes 80 general real estate questions, and approximately 10% of these questions are Raquel's favorite, math. Great. Anybody else has problems with math or loves math? Great. So like I said, don't worry, we have a chapter just for math. Okay? A whole chapter. Oh, yeah. If you intend to quit now, there's no refunds. I'll just I'll keep on repeating on day one. No refunds anymore, okay? Don't worry, I have a simple tool, a simple process. You guys will learn how to do the math real quick. Now, 30 questions are specifically in New Jersey real estate. Like I said, the majority is general. So you, whatever you learn here, you'll be able to apply in a different state. You guys got it? But there is some stuff that's specific to uh, New Jersey. In case of failure, just in case, no. right? You can come back to the state exam, but not within 24 hours. In fact, you cannot, cannot even schedule for the next day. You can try, they won't allow it. Once you complete the exam and you um, you bring it to your sponsoring broker, the sponsoring broker will send to the state, notify everybody that you're now active. You can begin working as soon as your name shows up in the state licensee name search. As soon as your name is active, you can begin working under your name. Why is this important? Again, hey, no. You get paid as soon as your name is active. But my question now is, can you be part of real estate transactions while not licensed? No. Mm. Go back to what you said. Um, you can start what? Okay. Now my question was, can you participate in real estate transactions? Yes. You just cannot get paid. So nothing is under your name yet. Can you start learning? Can you start being part of it? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to break my back, but here we go. Thank you. I'm younger than you. I'm younger than you. <laughs> All right. Anyway. I'm not even going to make a comment on that one. <laughs> Can you be part of real estate transactions? Yes. Start now, actually. Start interviewing brokers now. You go to a place you'd like to, to be at, start training now. Simple. Some brokerages, that's what they do. They have programs where you're in school, great, come learn now. Get ready. So once you're licensed, you already have everything lined up. You guys got it? Simple. Will you lose a client here or there while you're training? Possibly. I'm just saying, possibly. If you get licensed by the time the, the Right before it closes, can you get paid a, a transaction fee, like a referral fee or something? Maybe. It all depends on your broker. But at least you got the experience. Think about it. Some brokerages, what they do when, when you have no experience is pay you way less anyway. Might as well get paid something as you go. My point of view. All right. We already talked about CE credits. Let's talk about the guarantee fund real quick. And it says right here, the guarantee fund was established to reimburse members of the public who suffer a monetary loss due to the wrongdoing in the real estate transaction by a licensed broker, salesperson, or unlicensed employee of a broker. So if you do something wrong, there's a fund created by the state to reimburse members of the public. It says right here, the party must first obtain a court judgment naming the Real Estate Commission as a party to the suit. 
remember, they're suing you, your broker, and the real estate commission. You got it? They must also obtain a criminal claim against you. And next, it says that if they do pay out, the max that they'll pay out is $20,000 per offense. And there's more. If they do pay out the $20,000 or anything, your license is revoked until the fund is reimbursed with interest. Highlight, underline, put stars. Because there might be a question in the state or the school exam, I won't guarantee which one it is, but there might be a question that says your license, um, a guaranteed fund paid out a claim. What happens to your license? One of the answers is something to the effect of you'll be suspended for five years. But the correct answer is you're revoked as well until you pay back the fund. Why do they charge interest on it? Because they have to pay out for you. That means They're you're borrowing. It's a loan. They're lending. You got it? Now, interstate property. Where it says interstate, what does that mean? Interstate. It means out of state. So interstate property, I want you guys to write out of state property. Okay? So it says right here that the rules of the Real Estate Commission contain complex requirements that must be met before any out-of-state land can be sold in New Jersey to the residents of the state. The regulations contained in the Real Estate Sales Full Disclosure Act are intended, please highlight, underline, put stars, intended to protect the public from unscrupulous developers or marketers or from undue sales pressure. So it's to protect New Jersey residents from their marketing, okay? Next. The act requires prior approval and registration with the Bureau of the Subdivided Land Sales Control for certain new out-of-state properties being offered to New Jersey residents. It includes substantially the same requirements as Interstate Land Sales Full Disclosure Act, which regulates subdivided land on the federal level. Don't worry too much about this because we're going to repeat it later on in a different chapter. What you need to know about interstate property is that buyers have up to seven calendar days to cancel contracts for the purchase or lease of such lands. Seven calendar days. Are you having trouble with your stuff? <laughs> You're tired. What? Oh. We were here in the morning, we were here in the evening. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Um, real estate licensees should be alert to the possible need for registration and fees before working on the original sale of any out of state properties. You might have to register yourself as well if you're advertising out of state properties. Next, it says recent real estate commission rules also address non-New Jersey properties that are advertised in New Jersey in languages other than English. Subsequent forms, please all like, underline, put stars. Subsequent forms must be made available to prospective purchasers in the same language as was used in the original advertisement. So guys, if you're advertising in Spanish, all advertising must continue in Spanish. If you're advertising in French, all advertising must continue in French. You guys got it? It's a very simple rule. If you try to advertise in a different language, most people, and that's why it says recent New Jersey law, most of these advertisements to that particular group was just a hook. Everything else was in English. People did not understand the English. They understood what was explained to them in their own language. You guys got it? And so you're not baited into something they said Everything must continue in that same language. Okay? Simple as that. The final thing we're going to address is rental referral agencies. 
And it's what I said before, if you guys are helping anybody rent their apartments and you expect a fee, right? If you expect to get paid, then you must have a real estate license. And in fact, you must also enter into a contract with a prospective tenant. That contract must specify services to be performed, fees to be charged, the date and term of the contract, and a refund policy. We cannot just help other people rent and expect to get paid without a contract, without a license. You got it? Any questions? Like I said, other people. If it's your own properties, you can do whatever. Okay? You have any questions? Great. This is the best part, so get used to it. Every time you see this word, it means the chapter is done. It means break time. So if you need to go to the bathroom, if you need to get coffee, if you need to get water, if you need to jump around a little bit to have blood circulate, now is the time. For today, it's just a five-minute break, okay?